Hi everybody. I just got finished uh, doing a video about Stamping Up and uh, a new representative that I have with Stamping Up. Her name is Brandy Cox. She's really cute. She just moved, poor thing. She can't find her magnetic platform for her big shot. And I really do feel your pain, Brandy Cox. I really do because that stuff is pretty amazing and it really holds on to those dyes really well. So anywho, this is not what this video is about, so I'm just going to put this stuff aside very quick. Oops. Good news is it's just a hefty punch from Stampin' Up. Okay. This is a more um, serious and informative um, video, and it's concerning my condition of multiple sclerosis. And a common condition that sometimes, oh, a condition, I apologize, a common experience that I've had and have been told many times that others have had to and I just wanted to share it, and I have her permission. My friend's name is Robin, and she uh, is not yet diagnosed, but like so many of us, uh, we can go decades without being diagnosed because, uh, as I've described it to um, Robin, it's really more like buying a house and getting approved for the loan to be able to get diagnosed with multiple sclerosis, and it's absolute atrocity. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. In fact, I find myself being jealous of the people who are um, coming up with the littlest, idiotiest, Bitty, witty little pins and needles, and they're getting diagnosed. They have two lesions, and they're getting diagnosed. It took me like 30 lesions before they take me seriously, and seven years. Thus, multiplying my lesions and my disability, rendering me not able to work anymore, and keeping me at home now, legally disabled, and on a very meager uh, amount of money every month to live. Thankfully, I'm married to a wonderful man who takes very good care of me. So I'm in good shape, but I know there's people out there that are not, because I once was not, also. So getting back to Robin, she she caught me on a website. We found each other on a website. I think it was Eric's Multiple Sclerosis website. And it was talking about itching and stress, and, you know, and she was looking up the symptoms of multiple sclerosis. And um, we, we just got to talking, and we became kind of, you know, Internet friends, email friends. And she spoke to me about some of the symptoms, and I said, well, just go go to, go to a doctor. You're first going to have to go to your, um, your primary care doctor, and um, he's going to have to hear your concerns and find out that they have merit, and then he's going to say and suggest maybe we get a CT scan. They're really not very useful for multiple sclerosis because CT scans are really almost like an X-ray. So not real effective for finding the kind of things you want to look for with multiple sclerosis, like swelling. Although it'll pick up some major stuff, but the minor stuff, mm, probably not. So anyway, they're going to ask you to take a CT, and then we'll take a look at that, and we'll see what's going on. She said, okay. Oh, he also took a whole bunch of blood from her. Again, expect that. Um, your first uh, go around with this diagnostic process, This it is a journey. It is not a short trip around the block. Be prepared for that. They're going to take about four or five vials of blood out of your arm, and uh, they're going to be full. They're not little ones. The big ones. The big ones, you know, with like the white caps and things. And uh, they're going to have to put a little line in your arm with a little click off, click off, you know, so they can interchange all the vials because they're going to take a lot. And the reason why they're going to do that, I told her, was because they have to make sure you have nothing. Absolutely nothing. Right down to AIDS. So... They did. They took a lot of blood, and they sent her for her CT, and the results came back. And um, Robin, first off, excuse me, I've just... <sighs> Thank you. Ah, I think I just saw a fly by. Bad. Don't look. So I let Robin know that. So she was excited that he took her seriously. She went to get her CT. Finally came back. And, um, well, same thing that happened to me happened to Robin. Uh, her CT scan didn't show much. Maybe a couple of shadows, maybe one or two. But, you know, like, nothing massive, like an aneurysm or, you know, like, brain damage. So he said, but I, you know, he was a very good doctor. Thank you, Mr. So-and-so. Dr. So-and-so, you were very good to Robin. She likes you. But he took her very seriously. He says, hey, these things can be difficult to be diagnosed, so I'm going to send you to a neurologist. And so... Uh, she was very excited, although when I spoke to her, she was very discouraged because there was no test result. No one, no one test result came back and said, Robin, you're right, you have MS. Why? Because there is no test to diagnose MS. And I was able to talk to her about that, and she felt better after we talked. So, um, but in that same conversation, in my email, I did explain to her that 
uh, she really shouldn't put so much weight into this neurological appointment that she has coming in. She asked me why, and I said, because it's probably not going to take it so well. And I explained to her about my, my little, uh, what's a fancy name for, a, you know, like a play on words, but, or a play on situations comparative to the more serious situation. You know, like applying for a loan on a house, a HUD house. It, that's how similar it is, the diagnosis process for multiple sclerosis. He said, they don't tend to give these home loans to just anyone. You've got to apply. You've got to be hard up. You've got to only have so much money. You have to, you know, you get the idea. So I, I cautioned her, and we had a good talk, and she was ready. And she was excited. because She thought, this is it. It's, it's, I'm on my way to, you know, this journey that I'm on, and they're going to validate what I'm feeling this weird way that I've been feeling for so long. So she went, and um, I didn't hear back from her right away. Actually, it was several days. and um, But inevitably, she did get back to me, and uh, she shared with me <sighs> some upsetting news that her appointment did not go well, and um, he was quite condescending to her. And unfortunately, I had known that situation myself, and I had explained to her. You know, I was very transparent. I told her about my really horrible um, experience with my neurologist, and um, she uh, she was floored. She couldn't believe that he was so dismissive to her, and uh, just really crass and cold. And and she she I think when she heard me tell her what my experience was like, she was like, "No, really? Was it really that bad? Maybe Tracy just had a really bad experience with a real jerk." So I mean, wh who could blame her for thinking that, right? I mean, it happens. There are jerks in every field of of everything that you can do for a living. So um. She found her own jerk, and he was like that, and he really, he really got her. He really discouraged her, and um, they did take an MRI, and it, I think it showed a couple of lesions, but nothing that would uh, blow his socks off, because you see, if you really want to blow the socks off out of a neurologist, you, uh, you have to come in with like 29 lesions that are um, on both sides of your brain scan, your MRI, and come in half blind. Now, that rocks their boat when you come into an ER with all that. I mean, they just treat you like you're Princess Diana right out of the tunnel. I mean, they just rush you all places. They're like, wow, you've got multiple sclerosis. And you just lie there and you're like, really? Thanks. I knew that for like 15 years. And um, yeah, that gets them. That's how it happened to me. I had to end up going half blind before I could... Um, go into the ER for them to take me seriously because I had determined in myself, my, my primary care physician, again, I won't name him unless someone tells me later on that, oh, it's okay, you can name him, then I will. But um, he told me what my bad experience that the neurologist that I had had actually re wrote notes about me in the report to the doctor, my, my uh, primary care, and said that maybe I should go see a therapist and that... Um, if I did come back and need more results and need more follow-up, that I should perhaps see another neurologist and not go back to him. So um, that made me cry, and uh, I'm not really a light crier. I'm I'm kind of like um, when a guy cries, you know, you don't really see him, and if he is, it's usually right after he throws his fist down your throat. I'm kind of that kind of girl. I'm kind of tough, you know. I'm kind of a girly girl, but um, not really. In any event, he hurt my feelings, and my primary care was just. <laughs> You sure this went on like you said it did? And I'm just like, don't, don't go there. And so he said, okay, well, there's another way. There's got to be another way. It's like, I do not want to stop spinal tap. I just know it's bad. Spinal tap is bad. I don't want it. I had two epidurals with my pregnancies. Epidurals are, are injections into your spinal uh, column, and they flood it with uh, anesthesia, and it numbs you from, like, the chest down or just below the chest down. And um, I didn't I didn't react well to them. I didn't like them. I was very sensitive in my back when I got the injection. It was very, um, I wouldn't say it's a painful like you got um, hit in the head with a baseball, but it was more like the kind of painful uh, if someone were to take a, uh, a rod and, um, what's the right word to say, um, shove it in between your cheek and your teeth and then press against your teeth with all the leverage that they have. It was just a horrible experience for me. So I didn't want one. He said, okay, we have another option. You could just wait five years and then come back. Surely if you have MS, you'll have more lesions by then. 
and then they'll have no choice but to diagnose you. And I did that. In fact, I waited seven. And you know why I waited seven? Because I would never want to go through that experience again. Because I've been told my whole life when I was a little girl, I was very creative. I told a lot of stories. I was very artistic. Um, my imagination would run wild with me. And that Today, in this day and age, that's, that's not considered a bad thing. That's considered um, um, a child that's going to really turn out to be something great. So I, uh, I waited. And I did lose my sight in my left eye, but not like all around. It was the optic neuritis to where you have a dark spot in the middle and then you can kind of see everything around the dark spot. So you kind of, <laughs> you try to cheat and go, look over your side. And the black dot just follows <laughs> where you're looking. But if you look straight ahead, you can see the people on the side. So I could work with that. I could even drive with that. So I waited until it was so bad that the nurse on my insurance at Target told me that I needed to go to the hospital right then and there, which I didn't want to do, but I did. And that's when I got diagnosed. Diagnosed. So this uh, experience is not uncommon. So if you suspect that something is wrong neurologically with you, um, I suggest that you grab hold of whatever whatever faith um, you have, and um, you uh, you brush up on whatever you've been behind in that because you're going to need it. You're going to need a higher power. You're going to going to need you're going to need the Lord to help you because, I mean, these doctors will make you want to off yourself. And I'm kidding you not. I mean, they make you feel like you are an absolute crazy person, like a hypochondriac. And it's uh, so demeaning and it's so crushing to your self-esteem, to your um, confidence in your faith, to your awareness of, of what you feel in your own body. It's just, uh, it's, it's a terrible time. So if you think you might have something neurologically wrong with you, go to your primary care physician. Um, share with them all of your symptoms. Keep a journal of all your symptoms that you've been having, no matter how far back, if you remember when they happened and where you were and how long they lasted. Usually a clinical symptom of multiple sclerosis has to be at least 24 hours long. So um, a journal helps bring it with you to the doctor because they really give a lot of uh, weight to that. So keep that in mind. And uh, like I said, uh, I'm a Christian, so I cling to God. So um, he helps me through it. But if you're about to go and get your, um, your first uh, doctor's appointment, then just make sure that you're, you're prepared for um, not hearing what you want to hear. Okay, that's about it for now. Just got done doing the other video. Now I really want to play with my art supplies, so I'm going to get off. So I hope you all have a wonderful day, and uh, I guess I'll be back as soon as I can. Toodles!